Hi everyone! So last week I had so much fun with all those new jet pen supplies that I got and in doing new inktober pieces with them. You can see I put some of those brush pens to use here with the, especially that gray ink that turned out really nice. I love, I love how it gives me a nice range of lights to darks now. Anyway, that was, well, I enjoyed it so much that after a couple days of using those pens, I went back online for round two of indulging in fancy art supplies. So I have another box. You want to open this with me? All right, let's see what's in here. If you remember last week, one of the things that I got was this Ashki, Ash, Ashakia, Ashak, Ashakia um, refillable fountain brush pen. What that means is it is a brush tip pen. So it's just, it, these are these are used for calligraphy mostly, which is why you find them in Asian uh, stationery type stores and places but I use it for drawing because I love drawing with brush tips. Something about being a watercolor artist using pens all the time. And so inside I have a cartridge of custom colored ink that I have put into here. And it's refillable and you can put any fountain pen inks into something like this. So I liked this a lot and I wanted more of them. <laughs> because I wanted more colors, of course. So what I've got here now oh, is something that's really taped up. A few things. Okay, now what's in this? Ooh, this is this is another fancy colored ink. <laughs> it's in this fancy box. It is another J. Herbine ink because the last one I got was, was this guy? It was the light gray that I was using on so many of those Inktober pieces. This one now is in an extra fancy bottle for one. Look at that bottle. <laughs> and it is one of their anniversary edition inks. So it's a dark brown with a kind of glittery gold dust in it. At least that's what it looked like online. I'm gonna have to check this out. I'm going to try it out in a second, but let me go see what else I've got here. Okay, so this is Inaho. This is another ink. This is a sort of sepia brown ink. I wanted some browns to work with. This is much lighter in tone than the other one that I've got here. Ooh, you can see some of that gold glittery stuff collecting at the bottom of the bottle. Got to shake that up before using it. So yeah, this one is going to be a, a lighter colored brown. At least that's what I hope for. I like to have different shades of the colors that I'm going for since it's, it's going to be one tone within the brush and when I have a lighter version of it, I can use that for shading and I can use it for blending out areas, especially since I like using inks that are not waterproof. Uh, sometimes artists will prefer waterproof inks because if you're going to do ink line work and then you want to work in watercolors on top of it, you don't want everything to just get all smeary on you. But I actually like it when it gets all smeary and weird because it 
creates blobby shapes and shadings and things like that and that's what I enjoy. I mean you can see a little bit, let me find one of these October pieces where I did some of that blending. You can see it a little bit in this piece where I started with some of the darkest color blacks and then I worked in some grays and then with my lightest gray I kind of blend it all out so that I get a much um, a more graded version of it even though it is all ink right and you either have you have either have the color or you don't but when you have different shades of a color like this like with the gray that I was using or with brown I'm hoping you can get gradations of it of tone. Now what else have I got here? This is a replacement nib for a Kuratake fountain brush pen because I have I had one but it is the the tip of it well I've had it for many many years I've had it for like five years now and I've been using it in all this time and so the tip has gotten a little bit worn down and so I've got a replacement tip here and Kuratake and these other fountain brush pens they sell replaceable nibs that you can just then insert into your body and have a brand new point to work with. I've got to put a cartridge in this too first before doing that and I think I might use the this fancy one here for that. We'll do that in a second. Um, Oh, the other thing is this is this is a synthetic nylon tip. Kotake has two different versions. I think this is the number eight. Let's see. Well, that's that's the packaging for it. it. Doesn't say on here. This is the number eight version. They also have like a number 13, 40, and 50. I think the 40 and 50 are um, those are made of real sable. And the 8 and 13 are the nylon synthetic tips. I've only used the so my other tip that I had before was the sable one and I wanted to give a try for the synthetic to see how that works out. The other reason why I wanted to get the synthetic, well it's cheaper, <laughs> also because I have this ink with the glittery stuff in it, I'm not sure how this is going to do long term with a brush tip if it's going to start clogging up the hairs or making things you know making the tip not as nicely pointed so I didn't want to try that on to a um, on an expensive sable tip right off the bat I wanted to try it on a synthetic one instead and luckily the synthetic tips are interchangeable with the body that I have I also speaking of the sable tips this is the higher end version. So that was the that was the outer layer of it. This is also Kuratake. This is their highest end fountain brush pen. And it is very similar to what I just showed you. except this one is their sable tip. You can compare that how they look right now. Let me get this wet so that it comes to a nice point. I've been pretty impressed with Kuratake's synthetic tips that I've used on their disposable brush pens, so that's why I'm willing to give this a shot and see how it goes cuz I think I think I'll be pretty happy with it given what I what I know of them from their other products but they look pretty much the same. I think the synthetic one looks a tiny bit wider, actually. Strangely, I thought they were supposed to be the same size, but we'll see how they work out. So I think that's what I've got now for this haul. I've got the two bottles of ink, I've got my new nylon brush tip, and I've got the sable brush tip. Ooh, and I have another converter cartridge which I mentioned last time this is what you use because the 
the fountain brushes, they they do have so each each brand of these guys comes with their own cartridges. There, I've got an open container somewhere over here. Oh, here they are. Yeah, so this is this is what the cartridges look like, and you just you just pop those into the pen. And it comes with the ink that that, that company uh, provides for working with their pens. And if you want just the standard colors, then you can go with that, and it's nice and easy. This is, that's what's in here. This is more ink, so that's extra ink for me to use, and it's just gonna be black. But if you want to try other colors of inks, like these guys, then <laughs> you've gotta get something that's called a converter cartridge, which is what this is. And I figured out how they work now. I didn't know how to do it last time because I'd never used one. But what you do is you stick this onto your pen. Let's do that right now, actually. So I unscrew my pen. And so there's a little knob on the top here. This is called a piston converter. There's a few different kinds of converters. You could see the little thing inside there going up and down as I turn this knob. So I can make it go up, I can make it go down. And I start with it all the way down, and I stick this into my pen. And then I'm going to dip this whole pen nib, you know, about, about that far, so that the brush tip is completely submerged into the ink. And then I turn this little knobby deal up, and that's going to pull ink into the container and you just kind of repeat that because it's not going to pull it all the way up initially it's going to pull it like part way so you can go down again and then up again until the cartridge is filled with the ink of your choice and then you start to paint or draw with it i'm going to switch over to a view of my desk so you can see as i do that now <laughs> Here I have my ink. I have shaken it all up so it's all nicely mixed. And here I have my cartridge attached. And I'm going to insert it into the bottle directly like this. And twist so that my piston is all the way down. And then twist again the opposite direction pull it up. I'm going to just keep doing that, repeating that action a few times. Back and forth. All right. So I did that like three or four times. And now you can see that my cartridge is filled up with brown ink. wiping off the excess on the edge. Closing up the bottle. And I've got a lot on the tip of my brush here. So I just gotta wipe that down. Then I finish inserting my pen back portion, and it should be ready to go. It might be a little bit, oh no, it's perfect. Thought it'd be too wet at first, but it's, it's not. The consistency is pretty nice. So you can see with the with the brush pen tip, I can get a wide variety of lines. I can get this very, very fine, fine line, and I can also get very thick, wide painterly ones like this. Yeah, 
And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's a little bit of a gold sparkle to this ink. I really like it. <laughs> it's this warm brown tone with just the faintest of gold glittery bits in it. Very, very tiny and subtle. This is going to be really fun to use. You know, I thought I had bought two converter cartridges. I only have one, so I'm not going to be able to try out this other brown ink yet until I reorder again at some point to get a second converter cartridge. We can try it out with a brush though, just to see what it looks like. Now this is much more of a cool toned brown. This one is warm. This one has almost a green, greenish hint to it the golden greenish hint. So that's that's what this other brown I got looks like. That that will be nice to get into a brush pen eventually. But for now it's going to have to wait until I get another converter cartridge. You know, the first time I used a Chinese brush was when I was about what, 10 years old, I think, and I was taking these art lessons at this lady's house and she she taught me how to do bamboo. She made me do bamboo for oh, forever. <laughs> it felt like forever. It was it was maybe two or three weeks of just doing bamboo, but it felt like a really long time. And it involved it involved using the weight of the brush and your arm itself to create segments of bamboo and the bamboo leaves themselves where you just press down and lift up. I'm not good at it. I wasn't good at it then and I'm definitely not good at it now because I've had no practice with it. But that's um, that was when I first started, I hated doing the bamboo, but that was when I first started enjoying using brushes and appreciating how you could create so much variety of line width with just a single brush. And it's what I love using brush pens for now. It wasn't a brush pen that I was using back then. It was just a standard brush with uh, India ink that I had to grind out anyway. Uh, so one of the things that when I first fill up the pens, I actually like the tip to be a little bit more dry because when it's a little more dry and especially on a cold press paper like this, so this has a little bit of tooth to it, I can get some of this sort of shading. It's almost like, it's almost like shading with pencil on it. See, this is, this is actually a black brush pen and it's, it's getting more on the dry side. Sadly, especially with these disposable ones, once they get to that point, they're not much use for a whole lot longer because they're going to completely dry out. This is, this one has a bit more life to it. So you can see that's what it looks like. Black. It's actually the same. These are actually the same things, except for this one is an older one that's near the end of its life cycle, and this is a brand new one that I've just gotten, so that the ink is really thick and juicy on the page, and I can't do as much of that shading. If I if I move the brush fast across the surface, I can sort of get it, especially if I turn the brush on its side but it's not with as much control as I'm able to get with a brush that's nearly dried out. So same, same goes for the refillable ones. When I first refill it, it's going to be, the, the ink is going to be a lot thicker and wetter, but as I go, then it, it dries out a little bit more and then I can do more of that kind of shading stuff with it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this second session of enabling <laughs> and maybe you'll join me in uh, trying some of these things out and tell me what you think about them because I'm certainly having a whole lot of fun with it. All right, see ya.